All right, what's up, ladies and gentlemen? We are back here again for week number four of Backyard Bookie. Scott, you went a little north of the border. You're feeling a little lubricated. But did you have any humble pie? Because Deion Sanders almost had that humble pie shoved down his throat. And I got a feeling he's in some deep, deep shit this weekend. <laughs> well, uh, I did go north of the border. Uh, I did get a little uh, little lubricated. Got a few... Uh few Molson's, a few Labatt Blues in me, but, uh, you know, I, I didn't get that much humble pie. You know, uh, I think, I think Colorado is a good squad. I do think that they, they might need to get some humble pie this week. Uh, Oregon, uh, they're going, going to Oregon. That's a tough matchup. Um, I think both of us were on the Colorado train last week. Uh, we didn't, obviously we didn't know Travis Hunter was going to be uh, knocked out of that game with uh, kind of a cheap shot there, kind of a big player. He plays both ways. So when you got a guy who has you know that much impact on a game, um, you know that's that's a few points that's uh, going in the wrong direction. So uh, betting wise, I'm not touching this game this week. I'd like to just watch uh, watch to see if Bo Nix and the boys can uh, can get it done in Oregon. But uh, I don't know. We'll we'll, we'll see if uh, see if Colorado can hang around. I don't think their defense is good enough to. Uh, to hang with Oregon. No, they were getting cooked up by a B team squad over there uh, at Colorado State. That's not a good offense, and they couldn't stop a nosebleed. Um, the Colorado hype train is heat reached peak ridiculousness. I don't know if you saw that tweet. Like Dion's playing the band and crowd noise in practice. Oh my God! Every single Division One college football team has done that for the last fifteen to twenty years. I mean, I, everyone's gone stupid at this. I'm excited to watch this game. I wish it was at night. The zoo gets rowdy, um, and it's just a shame it's not a night game. But like you said, it was a wild spread. Vegas is on this. It was 17. It pushed right back up to three touchdowns at 21. Game you don't want to touch. But let's go over the scores. Not a great week for us. A couple of really close losses um, for me in particular. But you know me. I only care about me. But the score is, I think it's eight. It's eight, eight to five right now. It's still a three-point lead. We both got picked up another two points last week. And we're coming down to the wire here, folks. It's getting close. I need to pick up a game on you to get in full striking distance. But I have a good upset this week. We're talking plus 350 Ooh. upset to really swing this back into town. But we're not here to talk about upsets. What's your first pick this week? So I'm just going to start with uh, potentially the biggest game of the week uh, here. Uh, it's your Notre Dame Fighting Irish uh, against uh, Jack Savoka's Ohio State Buckeyes here. A uh, Ohio State University? Yeah. A, a, a University in Ohio University. Uh, Iowa, Ohio University. I can't even talk. Wow. Um, currently, Ohio State is uh, three-point favorites. Uh, Over-under is 55 and a half. Um, I think in the first pod, we kind of went over this, at least I did, uh, when you have a quarterback who can, uh, you know, throw the ball around, it's a six year quarterback going against a, uh, first, uh, first year starter who I forgot, totally forgot what his name was. I'm not, I haven't been impressed with him, um, whatsoever. Not even um, last week with Western Kentucky. They lit it up last week. That's, that's good for him, but, um, <laughs> no, still not. Uh, I think Ohio state is a complete sham. Um, Notre Dame at home is going to be rocking. Um, so I am taking Notre Dame plus, uh, I got plus three and a half earlier this week. It's at plus three now. So obviously the betters are, are liking that number as well. Uh, 59%, I believe of the public is on this game. Uh, a couple of the experts on action are also on this game with, with Notre Dame spread, which isn't always good, but. You know, I, f I feel pretty good about Sam Hartman. Um, he's, he's a stud. Uh, he's he showed that the last couple couple of weeks. He's a uh, probably a top ten Heisman uh, candidate currently. Uh, can definitely make his way up with a big win here. So um, I like Notre Dame at home plus three. I'm sure you like that pick as well. Uh, but yeah, I'm I'm just not uh, I'm just I'm just not big on the Buckeyes. I just um, I, I just don't. I just don't see them going, uh, winning a big game. So uh, we're going to take uh, some McCord. Kyle McCord, I believe, is his, uh, quarterback's name. Uh, um, yeah, I, yeah I, I, I'm all with you. I'm all with you. It's about better quarterbacks in this game. Uh, 
I would like a three and a half a lot more than three currently, but the field goal push gives you the push at least. Um, quarterbacks are the difference. I don't know what Ohio State quarterback can do in a big time spot in a prime time game. Sam Hartman has been unbelievable against great competition. Six touchdowns last year against Clemson. They lost that game. Wasn't his fault. Zero interceptions. I think he had another five touchdowns. Uh, five touchdowns against Boston. Con- no, who was this? Uh, anyway, he he lighted up. He lights it up in big time spots. Sam Hartman. I like this play. I don't want to touch this game because Ohio State has this weird thing where they look great and dominant, and they're really actually kind of shitty. And when they look kind of mediocre and kind of lethargic, this is actually one of the better Ohio State teams. I don't know if that's the truth right now. I would stay away from this, but I don't mind you back in the better quarterback in this matchup because Notre Dame's looked awesome through the first four games of the year for them. They can run the football. They have a really good quarterback. And the game's at home. That's a that's a big difference. They played Ohio State, and they were not a good team last year Notre Dame. And they played them to the wire in the shoe. And that was a obviously a playoff team for Ohio State. So I like that pick. I just I wouldn't touch it, but I'm okay with backing the better quarterback. Speaking of better quarterbacks, maybe the best team so far that's nobody's talking about except on this podcast right here. And that's your Oklahoma Sooners, baby. The Sooners are for real. I think they hung another 28 in the first quarter. This past weekend, this team has been rocking and rolling. Dylan Gabriel just, oh my, it's just lighting it up. Everything we thought he could be at quarterback that he wasn't. He's been awesome this year. And Brent Venable's defense was awful. Had a bunch of Lincoln Riley guys. Refilled, got his guys in there. This is looking like a Brent Venable's defense. Now they're going to have their first test of the season. They're going to Cincinnati. Cincinnati's not a good football team, Scott. I don't know if you knew this. They have been awful this year. This is not the Cincinnati team that was led by Desmond Ritter, Sauce Gardner, that went undefeated, went to a college football playoff. This is a bad Cincinnati team. I think they lost last weekend to somebody's, Jerry's kids, somebody awful. I got to pull this one up. Uh, Who did Cincinnati lose to last weekend? They lost to Miami of Ohio, 31-24. Terrible team right there. Now, This is the Sooners' first road test, so they might come out of the gates a little slow. This has been the best first quarter team in college football. I was really tempted to take an eight here in the first half with the Sooners, but I think they might start the game a little slow. Cincinnati's going to have the crowd going. Luckily, it's an 11 a.m. kickoff, so they ain't going to be too going there. I love the Sooners in this spot. I'm going to lay the 14 and a half on the road. I think this Sooners team is the best team in the Big 12. I think Texas is going to get kicked in the mouth by this team. I would not be shocked if they win that game in two weeks. I love what I see from Oklahoma so far, and nobody's talking about them. Nobody, this is, Texas is running away with this conference. Oh, Oklahoma, whatever. I'm, I would not sleep on the Sooners. Great quarterback, good head coach. They're finally finding the right guys in the right spots for this team. I think they crush Cincinnati. I'd be comfortable laying Another field goal. I'd be comfortable laying 17 and a half, but I only got to lay 14 and a half on the road here. I think this is a no doubt home run for me. Yeah, I think, um, I, th- I think it's more of a thing about, um, you know, Oklahoma hasn't really played anybody quite yet, but the, the difference is they've taken care of business every week. Um, it's not like, you know, Ohio state, you know, keeping it close and, um, other, these other games teams are are over in the first these, quarter. These games They're are over, over in the first quarter. They're taking care of business, better quarterback. Um, there's just no no screwing around with them. So um yeah, better quarterback, fifth fifth year quarterback. Um I like this pick a lot. Two touchdowns is a lot. Um but and the hook. just two in the hook. Off, two in the hook. Just based off of based off of, you know, the last couple of games with Cincinnati. Um I feel like this one could hit, um, but they haven't really played many uh, many great opponents yet. So we can see if they can they can you know play well against another Big Twelve opponent. We'll see how that works. But um, I do 12, like uh, in or, quotation yeah, marks. Big Twelve ish in, in quotation first marks. year Big Twelve. They are they are in the Big Twelve, but they haven't played any real Big Twelve teams yet with a you know real recruiting. So uh, interesting. We'll definitely. Uh, Definitely be watching that one. That should be interesting. Don't Gabriel's a man, so. 
Second pick. I'm going sort of against sort of against my own uh, own rules here. Oh. We're going to our game. We're going to our game. Oh boy. We're going, we're going to our game. Auburn, Texas A&M. Um not big on either team. Um I don't think either team is that good. What who has Auburn even played so far? I think you're sleeping on Auburn. Miami, my guy. Everybody's Auburn's sleeping on Miami. Got Stanford. Samford, Cal, and UMass so far for sh- Auburn. They should have lost to Cal last uh, week. And Cal was 14 to 10. Um, and our team is just butthole. Um, great, great win against New Mexico. Awesome job. Uh, great win against Louisiana Monroe. We're taking care of business where we can, but when we play a real team ish. Everyone keeps uh, sleeping on Miami. Uh, Miami is good. Watch. Miami's going to be a good. real competitor. Once again, good quarterback. He was a top, uh, what, top five to eight um, he was a recruit. Th- or not recruit, but a, uh, a guy. He, he was a guy. He was going to be, you know, he's going to be, a, he's going to get drafted. Van Dyke he was, was gonna, good I think he was the first quarterback projected last year. Going into last year, they had yeah. him projected as the first quarterback. And so he was awful, we, but now he's good. Yeah. So we do know he's real. Um, so whatever that's in the past, we lost over under 51 and a half. I got it at 52 and a half. Um, the last two times Auburn and a and have played, it has been violently under 13 to 10 and 20 to three. I don't think this changes. I don't think we're that good. We've gone under, we went under last week, even though we put up 43. So decent defense. Um, Decent. Miami put up 48 against us, but neither here nor there. Um, and Auburn has given up 13, 10, 14. It just doesn't feel like a big high-scoring game to me. It's going to be a struggle the entire game. Um, honestly, I potentially even like Auburn to win. I don't want to say that, but money line plus 265 is kind of tasty right now. Um, but I'm going to take the under um, – 52 and a half. I think this will be, um, you know, 28 to 21 type game, maybe even less than that. It could be in the teams. Um, I'm not expecting much out of this game. Uh, AM is a very, de- very deliberate sort of offense. Um, they can be. So Auburn's not great. AM's not great. I kind of like, uh, kind of like the under in this one. Uh, I'd be sweating this under. Uh, A&M's offense is good. I think everyone's sleeping on it. it. They can actually throw the football, and they can throw the football downfield. Auburn's not good at football, any stretch of the imagination. But DJ's Durkin, DJ Durkin's defense would petrify the hell out of me for any under. They can't stop a damn nosebleed with anybody who knows how to like tie their cleats. I mean, he can, gets beat in the pass. He gets gashed in the run. He allegedly killed a kid at Maryland. I hate this man so much. I wouldn't touch this under. That defense scares me. Now, if a defense shows up, I'll be pleasantly surprised. But I'm, I'm petrified. I think a and wins this game comfortably. I don't think Auburn's that bad. Or a and not that bad. And I think Auburn's pretty bad. Um, you know, the sometimes homer. the games that scare the hell out of you are the ones that win. So This is true. Never- this is true. Sometimes you got to make that leap of faith here. We're going to stick in the SEC, though. Because SEC, we make money in the SEC. Um, Mississippi State is going to South Carolina this weekend. Now, Mississippi State got kicked in the dick this past weekend against an LSU team that I think everyone thought was a little bit overrated after week one against Florida State. By the way, great pick of Boston College at Florida State last week. Great pick. Red bandana game. Um, but I think LSU is getting back into what everyone kind of thought LSU was going to be. Mississippi State is just really, really struggling to run this offense. Without the pirate there, rest in peace. Any sort of energy and momentum they had that was spent in the bowl game, they can't throw the football. This team, they're gonna have to run the ball. They have to lean on the run. And South Carolina, they played great against Georgia, dominated that first half. They ended up getting shut out in the second half and lost that game. But Georgia's the back-to-back national champions, number one team in the country. That's a great football team. I don't care if it's not the same team; they're still a great team. Kirby Smart's halftime speech, damn it, make you run through a wall, and that's why Georgia wins football games. But they kind of get a reprieve here. They opened up with North Carolina, 
physical team kind of that can throw the rock all over the place. They got to play Georgia. Desmond Ritter's looked good this year. He has not been bad whatsoever. Looks a lot more like the first year Ritter that we saw at Oklahoma. He's getting comfortable in this offense. I think this is a great spot for the Gamecocks here. They get a little bit of a reprieve. Mississippi State's not good. They're the 117th ranked passing defense in the country. South Carolina's sixth in passing offense. So they should be able to sling this rock all over the field. And when my Miss, uh, Mississippi State, when they have to pass, they can't. We saw them last week against LSU. They had to pass. It was really bad. It looked like AM's passing offense from last year. Just 12th grade stuff that you run in, you know, maybe not even junior varsity. You don't even run that shit. So they have to run the ball. And that's just not conducive for keeping up with this passing attack of South Carolina. I think they're going to be at home. They're going to be feeling juice. They're not going to be let down by the performance at Georgia. I think it was an all-around great performance. But it wasn't one of those like let-down games where you lose that game in the fourth quarter with two minutes left and you just kind of expend all your energy. It was kind of... That game was never in doubt by that start of that fourth quarter. So I love the Gamecocks to bounce back here. They're only laying six and a half at home. So I'm getting less than a touchdown. Um, I think that's no problem. I think Ritter just carves this team up all day, all day Saturday. I like Ritter over whatever the passing prop is. I could probably look Rattler. Up. Rattler, Ritter, same thing. They're all stupid. <laughs> I wasn't going to correct you. Go ahead. Jump in. Uh, what's the passing yards here? Rat the rat two seventy one and a half. I like the over on that. That's a low number. I think they carve up this Mississippi State team. I mean, I don't think Daniels is that good of a quarterback at LSU. Neighbors went for what two thirteen in that game. It was just stupid. They can't cover anybody. I think you could probably throw for a buck fifty against this Mississippi State defense <laughs> out there. Not so anymore. yeah, I'm gonna t- I'm gonna take the Gamecocks laying six and a half at home. Yeah, Will Rogers has kind of uh, fallen off a little since the uh, last couple it's, of years. So it's just a new offense. I it's just like everything's disjointed. They're learning a completely new offensive scheme, and it's just it's bad. It's just it's just kind of sad because he did so well the last couple of years. You know, thirty probably thirty plus touchdowns the last couple of years, and slinging the rock, he can run a little bit. Um, I am a little scared. Eighty nine percent of the public is on South Carolina here. Um, that is a little disturbing. Um, <laughs> So when you're with the public with that much, um, there's a reason Vegas has those hotels. We've talked about this, but um, given you know, given the quarterback talk, Sean uh, McVay Rattler, is why very, Vegas very has good. those hotels. Sean McVay is why Vegas has those hotels. <laughs> yeah, th- this week at least. Uh, yeah, exactly. All right, what's your uh, third game? <laughs> anyway, uh, <laughs> unbelievable. Um, so yeah, we're going to go with, uh, another darling of, um, of college football currently the app state Mountaineers. What are they called? Uh, yeah. Are they Mountaineers. Mountaineers? Are they Mountaineers? Making sure the that's prob- right. No, app state um, mountain men. App state, uh, the mountain men. What are they? I don't know. I the think mountain men, whatever they're called the Appalachian state mountains. I don't know. Anyway, they're playing Wyoming home. Uh, oh. The Wyoming is at home. Excuse me. They're in Laramie. Uh, Tough game. Currently, App State is the plus three. Uh, App State's shown they can play a little football this year. Uh, they showed they could play football against us last year. My thing is, currently, they put up 34 against UNC. They put up 43 against Eastern uh, East Carolina. And uh, who was this game? GW. Is that Green Bay or something? GWEB. <laughs> Grambling. Who they Probably are. Grambling. Gardner. Gardner, Gardner Webb. Gardner Webb? Uh, the basketball? 40, 45 against Gardner Webb. Uh, Wyoming can show they can play a little football too. 35, 31, and uh, they actually kind of kept up with Texas until they the fourth quarter last week. Tied going into the fourth last week. So I'm looking at this over under. It seems a little small for me. 43, I think I got it at. Uh, I actually got it at 43 and a half. I'll take the 43 and a half, but. Um, it doesn't seem like enough points. Wyoming shows they can score App State. Obviously, this shows they can. Uh, my only worry is that it's in Laramie. Um, Texas Tech can be, um, you know, Exhibit A on that one. It's it's tough to play there. Uh, very high. Uh, 7,200 feet is very high up in the sky there. Uh, very tough to breathe. Uh, so, the you know, the offense, defense might be huffing and puffing a little bit towards the end. Uh, but App State, you know, they're, they're, they are named after a mountain. They mountain are. range. Those, so, those are mountain ranges. You know, so That's they, good. So, so, may, so maybe they can keep up, uh, keep up in the in the high altitude. So, 
Um, they on uh, on action. Uh, sixty nine percent is on the over um, for the, from the public. So we'll take forty three and a half over App State Wyoming. I like it. Points. Give me points. 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 Uh, Wyoming could have a letdown easy after losing that game to Texas. You know they fell apart in the fourth quarter because I I really thought they had a shot in that game. They were really controlling the line of scrimmage. Quinn Ewers he has that real issue of he just plays to his competition. He plays a good team. He looks great. Plays a bad team. He looks awful. Um, and App State they. They get up for these games, but they also don't get up for, like, mid-majors because they're, like, terrible in conference play. They're great against P5 schools and just super average in conference play. So this could this could lead to some points here today. I like this. I like this over. I like betting the over sometimes. All right, we're going to do something fun here. I okay. have two games circled. One or two, Scott. I like both these games. The other game will go on my honorable mention, but I'm going to let you decide your own fate here. We're going to go... Two. Two, okay. It's a ballsy play, Scott. You didn't go one. One was about to be crazy. It would have been crazy. You'll hear it on the uh, overall. Let's break it up. All right, USF. They're playing Rice this weekend after a stunning showing against Alabama. USF. They were dominating that game. Tied at halftime 3-3. They did play in a monsoon, to be fair. It was raining pretty heavily. I think we had a weather delay at one point in this game. But honestly... Rice, they've been balling out this year. They have showed they are not this pushover. They have an actual quarterback. Do they actually have quarterback here? Rice, week one against uh, Texas, looked strong. Didn't get blown out. Texas didn't cover. They played well. What did Rice do week two? They're two and one, so they won week two. 43-41 against a Big 12 school in Houston. Take out Houston. That's a real team right there. That's at least a Power 5 team, allegedly. And then they win 59-7 to against Texas Southern. I mean, Daniels. This is a Power 5. This was an elite quarterback recruit. And now he's leading the Rice Owls. They're scoring some points. They're playing some good ball. I'm only laying two and a half here on the road. USF, I think it was a fluke last week. They weren't good. It was awful weather. Alabama didn't have a quarterback. They didn't know what to do. I think this USF team is bad. I think they're bad. I really think they're bad. It was just a fluky weekend. And what's the rule here in college football? Go with the better quarterback. I mean, Daniels has been lights out so far for a a Rice. Where are they ranking passing? I think they're, yeah, they're 41st in passing for a Rice team that everyone, you know, everyone wants to shit on. That's pretty good for a team like Rice. They're doing a good job. They score points. Their defensive line is awesome. They controlled the trenches against Texas. USF ain't got dudes like that. They ain't got dudes like that. Now, you say Alabama has dude, couldn't do anything with dudes. I don't know if Alabama's got dudes like that on the defensive line anymore these days. They're looking tough. So I'm all in on this Rice team here. I think they were – I was really down on them to start the season, but they've really showed me this is a competent football team. Two and a half on the road, nothing for me. It's going to be hot and sweaty maybe. It's hot and sweaty in Houston. Not much of a not much of a weather change there. So I'm not too worried about it. I mean, maybe if it's a torrential hurricane – I don't think that's in the forecast this week, and I could be wrong. So I'm going to take Rice here, laying two and a half on the road, less than a field goal. I like it a lot because it gets a little sketchy at a field goal for the push over a field goal. I'm okay with a game-winning field goal from Rice here if they have to, but I think they win this going away at USF. I'm kind of wishing I picked the other game, but mm. uh, the yeah. other you're not. You want to know? I, I, you're not because the other no, game was an ugly one. Yet. You don't got to tell me yet. We All can, right. uh, it we was ugly. Second, but, uh, like you said, good quarterback with Rice, uh, transfer from Georgia. Um, yeah, I mean, I don't they know much Houston. about this game. They beat Houston. They beat Houston. They, they played did. good they against did. Texas. So we can uh, we can we can see what happens, but uh, I'm not watching this game. I'm not uh, not tuning. <laughs> I can't in. wait. Uh, I can't wait till we cover on your action. We're gonna so, be going uh, go Rice Owls here. Um, so, What's I'm, your prop? Uh, a, Give us a prop. We'll go prop first. All right. So uh, we're going to the uh, the football league here. Um, we're going to kind of an ugly game. Uh, not quite ugly, but one team is ugly. One team is sort of uh, Houston <laughs> Texans and the Oof. Jacksonville Jaguars. Um, go ahead to kind of dig deep for this one. But I'm really liking uh, one player in particular for the Houston Texans. Um, 
Nico Collins. Oh yeah, fantasy stud. Big target, uh, big target guy. I believe he's had nine, eleven the last two weeks. He is on my fantasy, both my fantasy teams, but that doesn't matter. Um, that's that's not the reason I'm picking him. You're all in two. Yeah, nine, so maybe eleven. This is target. not a good pick. Maybe this is not well, a good pick. Well, okay, I'm two and on the I'm two and on the other one. But six, <laughs> uh, six, six catches, seven catches in two games, eighty yards, one forty six. Um, I'm only I'm only needing fifty two and a half yards. Um, I think CJ Stroud's looking for Nico Collins. I don't think there's many other any other targets that he's really looking for. It's really about um, you know, is he going to throw the ball enough to get him the ball? And they're playing the Jacksonville Jaguars, who are a good team. They should go up pretty high on him. Uh, they're nine point favorites. Um, that's that's passing, I and mean, that's that's that seems like a lot of passing to me from CJ. So just fifty two and a half. Is all I need. I feel like that's a pretty easy get. That could be, you know, four catches and and get that. So um, I'm liking 52 and a half with Nico. Yeah, I like this. Uh, the Jaguars uh, played pretty bad at home in their home opener, and they're back at home. You don't want to go 0 and 2 at home. I expect them to jump out early. The Jags' offense has not looked good the first two weeks. So this is a get right game. The Texans' defense got carved up by Anthony Richardson and Gardner Minshew last week. Jags get up early. Somebody's got to be the best player on a bad team. Nico Collins, that guy right there. So I like this. I like this. That's easy. I, easy garbage. And even when it's not garbage, it's just one connection, 30 yards. I mean, he hits them all day, it feels like. Um, and Stroud has not been atrocious at all. Stroud looks very competent as an NFL quarterback so far. Um, you know, he's not lighting it up, but he doesn't look like Justin Fields out there. He looks okay. Uh, the other Ohio State quarter. Um, all coaching. right. Yeah, uh, I'm going to go back to college football. We hit this game in the open. We said we didn't want to touch it, but I'm getting my hands all over this game. I'm heading to Eugene, and the Colorado Buffaloes are walking into the Auten Zoo, and they're in for an ass whooping. And not only are they in for an ass whooping, this is a nationally televised game. I wish it was at night to even get more hype on there. Bo Nix has got a Heisman campaign. I've seen the advertisements on CBS Sports. They're pushing hard for a Bo Nix Heisman. Pac-12 really wants another Heisman quarterback. We got my boy Michael Penix out there, lighting it up. Can't wait. Didn't take him this week. I'm sorry, Michael. Didn't take you last week. I should have trusted you. I still love you. Bo Nix, 313 passing yards. Hammer in the over. Over, over, over 313. I think this is a lighted up Heisman game. Everybody's watching. They're going to want to make an example. Here's your humble pie. And look, oh, your precious Buffaloes. Bo Nix just threw for 450 and five tutties against them. His over-under on touchdowns was two and a half. I almost took that, but that's a big number. Um, Colorado could not stop the crossing routes. Like you said, Travis Hunter, your best defensive back. And Travis Hunter is an elite defensive back. He is easily starting on Alabama at defensive back. He's that type of player, even if he's not playing two ways. So you already are a thin unit. You're missing your best player. Your defensive line is not great. You're not going to get a pass rush. And Oregon is going to pour it on this weekend, I think. They are not going to pull off the dogs. They're going to try and run this bad boy up because it's going to look like a good win. First win against Colorado is going to look good. Now, if USC does it the next weekend, you know, the high, it doesn't look as good. You want to be the first. You never want to be in there after. So I think Bo Nix lights it up this weekend. He's going for the Heisman Trophy, 313 passing yards. It's a slightly big number, but it's not really inconceivable at all. I mean, I'd be a lot more scared at like 375, but 313, we could throw this in the first half. Yeah, for me, it's it's just the, uh, even the first week when I picked uh, Colorado to cover, it's for me, it's it's kind of an unknown deal. You know, we all picked TCU to their, you their know, defense is blow bad. Them out the first their game. defense is I, bad. Yeah, I, get, I, get that. I get that. I get that. But the first game we're talking about, you know, TCU, you know, sh- you know, serving up an ass whoop in game one, they end up losing. Nebraska, okay, it's Nebraska. We we have a good feeling they're going to lose that game. But there's still good people. There were still people on Nebraska plus three uh, to to win that game. And they got their asses kicked. And then game three, we're saying they're going to get their ass. Colorado State's going to get their asses kicked. And look what happens. You know, the it's a, it's a close game, double overtime. Travis Hunter gets hurt. So it's really just a big unknown for me. I don't, I just don't want to touch anything about this game. I do like Bo Nix 
you know, lighting up at home. Three thirteen seems like a uh, seems like a lot. I don't know what he's done the past couple of games, but um, uh, he was. Too, he's also he's also he hasn't played in the second half. They pulled they've been pulled off the dogs. I think he threw for three seventy five week two, but he, they've been pulled off. He's not throwing the ball a lot because they've been cruise control Oregon. This just kind of seems like an under game and a lot of rushing at the end. I, I don't know. I I probably wouldn't touch this, especially if we really do think Oregon's gonna just beat the living shit out of Colorado, which they definitely could. But like you said, bad pass D from from uh from Colorado. Bad, They've bad that D last. from Colorado, just all yeah, around. Pretty much, TCU, pretty much bad TCU TCU scored TCU's against them. I mean, I this could be a high scoring game, and that's even better. If Shadur Sanders balls out and they're hanging a thirty piece on this Oregon defense, that helps we gotta, out, yeah. Yeah, we gotta play a 35-40 game. I'm all okay with this. I I don't the Colorado offense is the big unknown to me. I don't quite know. Right. I know this defense is bad, especially without Travis Hunter. Yeah, I get that. So it's really just about what what does this game look like on the Colorado offensive side? I, we don't know that, and t- picking someone to throw three thirteen is it's it's just it's just tough for me. I probably couldn't do it, but we'll see what happens. <laughs> I was worried about Michael Penix last week, and I gave it. I think it was three fifty for the game, and he threw for four bills in the first half. So, um, yeah. Do you have any honorable mentions? Any honorable mentions, real quick? I do have some honorable mentions. Here we go. Uh, let me pull them up real quick. So I do have one, uh, one for the brand here: Penn State, Iowa under forty one and a half, as uh, as we would pick. Um, Big Ten under. I can't. Not going to say much more Locked. about that. That's pretty yeah. obvious. Ole Miss plus seven at Bama. Interesting. Um, I think it's a close game. Milrose back. He's a little more dynamic than the other two um, quarterbacks. Could be could could be a big uh, Milrow, you know, comeback game. We'll see. Um, but I got Ole Miss plus seven. Uh, going to the uh, the football league, Denver Miami. I like them under forty eight. Mm. Uh, Denver, um, they just scream under to me every single week. It doesn't matter who they play. Um, Miami obviously has, has guys who can score quickly. Um, and two has shown that he could potentially be an MVP, but I don't think he will be. It's, we talked about this last, last year too with him and then he got killed. So, um, (laughs) no more brain injuries, please. I don't think that's going to, I don't think that's going to happen, but I do like the under 48. I think they're going to slow down a little bit. Denver's not bad on D, but their offense is garbage. So it's really depending on what Denver wants to do on on offense. Um, and then I have Texas State, who is surprisingly good. that was the game, Scott. That was the good. game. Texas State minus Texas seventeen State. and a half good. against the Wolfpack. That was the mystery game. And I got Texas State minus seventeen and a half here. Yep. Texas yep. State, good question mark. We'll see if they can blow out. Uh, and they're at home against Nevada, so. Who knows? Lit up Baylor's defense. Baylor sucks. Lit up Jackson State. They suck. Nevada might be the worst Division I team in college football. Like, they are the worst. They are abysmal. I mean, it's shocking how bad of a football team they are. So, I loved Texas State in this game. Love the new system. They got all the transfers, kind of like Colorado. Got a new head coach, and they are slinging the rock. So, yeah, Texas State minus 17 and a half. Maybe that would have gotten your juices flowing a little bit more. That was off. Awesome. No, nah, I was off. No, I like it. We have that one on honorable yeah. mentions. I told you. It was off off the beaten path there. All right, that was my first big one, obviously. And then my other one, National Football League, Tampa Bay Buccaneers getting five points at home on Monday night against the Philadelphia Eagles. Eagles have not looked great the first two weeks. They are 2-0. They, are, they do have 11 days off. Baker Mayfield... There's something wrong with him. He loves being an underdog. If he's an underdog, he plays good. If they expect him to be good, he's shit. And nobody expects him to be good. He's playing really well. Philly haven't been able to pass the ball really at all this season. Now, I'm sure they worked on that, but this run game is what they've leaned on the first two weeks. Tampa Bay is not going to let you run the football. This run defense is stout, and Philly's secondary is kind of ass. I mean... Cousins and Jefferson cooked them up. Jordan Addison had a huge touchdown against them last week. Mike Evans, Chris Godwin, as good as you, solid. Mike Evans is a guy play. He's playing like a guy who heard all the talk in the offseason. Oh, you're nine straight thousand yard seasons. That's over this year. 
you're washed, you're old, you know, whatever. He's playing like a man possessed right now. Absolutely feeding into this underdog mentality. Uh, I think the Eagles probably win this game, but I like five points at home as a dog on Monday night for two 2-0 two teams for here. But let's get to your upset of the week. Yeah, so I, I hate to pick this team. Um, <laughs> firmly against what they believe in. <laughs> oh, God, who are they? <laughs> Uh, BYU is going to Kansas. Oh, I like this game. I like this game. Uh, BYU is a plus uh, 290. Uh, big win against Arkansas last week. Um, and, and two other wins, Sam Houston, Southern Utah. We talked about those last two games. Uh, they have a real quarterback. Uh, they really do. And Keaton Slovis, we've talked about him last probably last two weeks. I'm pretty sure I brought him up every single week. BYU real team. Been playing, playing competent football. Play, playing decent football after the first week that they, I think they were a little bit lost. Um, but after, you know, beating an SEC team um, on the road, uh, a plus, uh, they were plus eight that week, uh, scored 38 against probably not a very good Arkansas team who we should beat, but um, who the hell knows. Uh, really the, the worry is, is, is Jaden Daniels. He's, 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 he's a baller. Um, it's really about what he can do here. He he can run. He can he can throw. Um, but they are Kansas after all. Uh, don't forget that they are Kansas. <laughs> this isn't this isn't the old Kansas team back in the day when uh, you know they went to the I forgot what bowl they went to, but it was a good Orange bowl. Bowl. Orange bowl. Orange Bowl. Mike Mangino. Bowl. Keep Tlaib. That team was awesome. Right that that team was yeah, great. great team. That's not the same team. They don't have Mangino anymore. So. I like plus 290. That's a pretty solid number. Almost a 300, almost a 3 to 1 uh, dog. Uh, they're plus 9.5 on the road. You know what? I think it's worth a little sprinkle. And it's worth the uh, 60, pick. So. 65% of the public like in BYU here in this game. They do. They like they like the spread. Uh, money line, they like. It's, it's kind of split down the middle, which kind of shows, you know. Kansas played bad uh, against Nevada last week. They struggled with Nevada. Nevada Nevada played out of their ass. Like sometimes teams have that game where they just they play to a new level. Um, I like. Yeah, that. I mean I, they're one and two against the spread so far this year. Um, over unders all you know one one one. So you don't know what team we're going to get. Who knows? So I like a little sprinkle on BYU. We'll see. I don't hate this. I don't, hate this. I don't hate this. I like this game a lot. Actually, um, I looked at this game. I had this game. Uh, written down as a potential. Like you said, though, maybe Kansas has a bounce back. I do think Kansas is good. I don't think they're terrible. I think they're good, though. Um, I love the 9.5. I love the 9.5. Um, but obviously, we're not here for 9.5s. So we're here for money lines. Funny you talk about the Big 12. I'm going to go to the Big I'm going to stay in the Big 12. You know, uh, There's a game being played in the state of Houston, in the city of Houston. A former school you may have uh, partaken in. Sam Houston State's going to Houston this weekend. We're plus 350. We're plus 350. Uh, Houston has not been good whatsoever. Smoked by TCU. Lost to Rice. They barely beat a UTSA team that was pretty flat week one. UTSA is a pretty solid squad for a mid-major um, they beat Texas State UTSA, and we're on Texas State that they're a solid team. So I think the UTSA game week one is more of a fluke than a indication of what this Houston team is. Sam Houston State, on the other hand, they're zero and two, so they had a week to prepare for this. It's kind of a, you know it's kind of a rivalry game. Sam Houston Houston, it's not really, but uh, uh, they've played two elite defenses. Houston is not an elite defense. Sam Houston played BYU week one. They lost 14 nothing. We like the Cougars. They play great defense. Air Force week two. They lost 13-3. That's an, We talked about this Air Force defense. They covered for you last week. I think that was your other win. Nine and a half. That defense is awesome at Air Force. So Sam Houston's numbers on offense are a little misleading. They're ranking at the bottom. They're not scoring points. They play two of the best defensive teams in the country. They're going to get a nice break against a shitty Houston team who's lost two in a row, lost to Rice, lost to TCU, smacked by TCU. I think we got upset. You had an extra week to prepare for this game. They probably got a whole new set of plays 
brought in wrinkles, all sorts of new stuff. I love this action here at plus 350. So I'm going to ride you, Sam Houston State this weekend. I think they're going to get it done. I think this is the first upset that hits for us. I love this game. I love it a lot. See, I'm seeing, I'm seeing here 37 and a half over under, so they're not expecting any points whatsoever. And then you give give Sam Houston uh, 12, and a half. 12 and a half to work with. They don't uh, think that there's going to be any scoring in this game, and they think it's all going to be on the Houston side. Uh, Sam Houston has shown they, they did play two decent teams. They have shown they can't score. Um, Those are great teams. Like you said, maybe they, maybe they catch a little break here. Uh, Sam Houston, you know, they're, they're, they're not too far away from Houston. So, you know, Sam Houston faithful will show up to this game. They will be on their side. There's, it's not just going to be a one side of the game here. It's not too far. It's, you know, it's, it's an hour and a half away. Um, there are some big football fans there in Huntsville. So, you know, I don't want you to win this game, but I'd like them <laughs> to win this game. You um, want them to win this game though. <laughs> I'd like them to win this game. Uh, they are my, uh, first college I attended, so obviously I'd like them to win. So Here's, we'll see what happens. I, I do, I do keep... like the pick. I think I actually I looked at this game for a little bit too, but I just I uh, couldn't pull the trigger. So we got to make up points. Um, they fifteen. They were getting fifteen. It's down to twelve and a half. The sharps are on. Sharps are on Sam Houston. I like this. I like this yeah. a lot. I think we smell we'll upset here. I, um, I, all I, right, I give. Give us the rundown. I know you don't want them to win, but give us your rundown, and we'll wrap this puppy up. So I got Notre Dame plus three and a half uh, at home against Ohio State. Uh, see if that works. That's probably the biggest game of the week. Uh, Auburn, A&M, under 52 and a half. I don't think they score that many points. It's going to be a defensive struggle. Uh, App State, Wyoming, over 43 and a half. App State's shown they can score. Um We'll just see if that altitude holds them back a little bit. Who knows? Uh, for the prop, Nico Collins over 53 and a half yards. Uh, been well over that the last two weeks. Lots of targets. CJ Stroud's looking for him. So uh, one or you know, one or two big plays there. It's an easy over. And then the money line dog BYU plus 290 at Kansas. Awesome. All right. Uh, I got the Sooners minus 14 and a half against Cincinnati. No problem here. I love the Sooners probably more than a rational person should who did, has no tie to them really whatsoever. Uh, so I got South Carolina minus six and a half against Mississippi State. I think the rat bounces back after a solid performance against Georgia, and I think Mississippi State is just really bad on offense. Uh, for my third game, Scott, you pick this. It's death by a thousand cuts. It's going to be the Rice Owls minus two and a half against the USF Bulls, I think they're the Bulls. Yeah, the Bulls. Um, I like this Rice team. Good quarterback. Struggled way better than the competition. Uh, for my pro uh, prop, I got Bo Nix lighting up that Buffalo's defense over 313 passing yards. Heisman contention. He's got to keep up with Caleb and Michael. And then for my upset of the week, I got Sam Houston State plus 350 against Houston in a slight rivalry game. And to get me right back in firm control of making you have to spin the wheel of pain. <laughs> yeah, we'll see about that. All right. Uh, that's going to do it for us this week. Again, everybody like this video. Subscribe to the channel if you're not already. Share this video with your friends. We'll be back here again next Friday. And we're going we're gonna to know. We might know. I could fall apart and you could go 5-0. and oh, And I could be looking for some serious pain, but that's going to do it for us this week. Thanks for stopping by and we'll see you all again.